What's up YouTube? This is James coming back at you with another informative video. I hope you guys are doing well out there on this beautiful warm Thursday. I'm doing pretty good myself. And just think, yesterday it was 30 degrees, cold and raining. But today, hey, it's just the opposite and I'm loving it. Shout out to the sister queen. I know who I am for hipping me to this particular situation. About Anthony Tony Mitchell froze to death after guards put him in walk-in freezer at Alabama jail. Lawsuit, okay? So it turns out that no matter what color, race, creed, or whatever you are, if you go in the belly of the beast, you're liable to be tortured. They don't care who you are. You understand what I'm saying? That seems to me, you know, that's the only thing they don't discriminate about. You know, and they talk about going, basically re-educating people um, to come back out in society, you know, and walk like they're supposed to walk, but... When you do hellish conditions like this on human beings, well, more than likely, that's not going to happen, you know, because when they get back out, they're just going to re-inflict back on the public what they learned in prison, okay? Now, to get into this story right here, it says an Alabama man froze to death inside a county jail after he was placed inside a walk-in freezer or another cold area by guards, a recently filed lawsuit alleges. The family of Anthony Tony Mitchell says that more than a dozen jail officials in Walker County abused him and then schemed to cover up the alleged mistreatment. Mitchell dealt with hellish conditions inside the jail for roughly two weeks before his death following his arrest in mid-January. His grieving mother, Margaret Mitchell, argues in the suit. While Tony languished naked and dying of hypothermia in the morning hours of January 26th and his chances for survival trickled away. Numerous corrections officers, well, corrections officers and medical staff wandered over to his open cell door to speculate, excuse me, to spectate and be entertained by his condition. The bombshell complaint claims wow you know so they didn't care you know what condition that this man was in you know and matter of fact from what this says they were in entertained by it watching this man die you know to continue here it says a walker county sheriff's office told a relative that mitchell 33 will receive help while inside the jail after his arrest but instead he was tased by guards and housed in the jail naked due to the facility's suicide watch policy. Hmm, the lawsuit speculates. <laughs> wow, suicide policy. They said this man, was, they on, he got him on suicide policy, but you're doing things, allegedly, to kill him. Don't make sense to me. Mitchell suffered from drug addiction and faced more, well, faced both medical and physical health woes, according to his family. And I guess this is some pictures of, you know, uh, what was actually happening. As you can see right here, I guess this is Mitchell laying on the floor and you got the guards watching, you know, uh, they must have, you know, confiscated all of the evidence like cameras and everything just to see this basically back up what this article is saying. Okay. To continue here, it says the lawsuit states, it appears that Mitchell was strapped down to a restraint chair and placed in the jail kitchen's walk-in freezer or a similar frigid environment for an extended time as some sort of twisted punishment mitchell was arrested on january 12th after authorities responded to a call from the cornered family member when deputies arrived mitchell allegedly fired a gun at them once the for law enforcement retreated to the woods near his house the sheriff's office said in a press conference release the next day after a mass of officials flooded the scene including sheriff nick smith mitchell was taken into custody here's the question i got right here for that situation right he fired a gun at you guys so you claim and yet you took him in alive to get him and bring him to, you know, take him to jail <laughs> and then allegedly stick him in a cold ass freezer and let him suffer 
and freeze to death. That don't make sense to me. You know, uh, especially, you know, with all of these particular situations that we have seen ourselves on social media, in the news, where you got young black men that is actually, you know, complying or even running away as no, th you know, as a threat at all, but yet some kind of way wind up shot to death. That don't make sense to me. It's the way these people think and the way they do things. But I can say this, a lot of these guards, you know, uh, the way they treat people, they're nothing but criminals themselves and they need to be behind bars, you know, and that's just what it is. Now to continue here, uh, Mitchell's family filed a lawsuit and released images of his treatment in the county jail. Yeah, and that's this right here. He looked like he was in bad shape too, you know what I'm saying? Uh, wow. Condolences to the family, by the way, you know. And this is the guy right here, drinking a Red Bull. Stay away from Red Bulls, man. Red Bulls will mess you up. I'm going to just say that. That's my, my opinion on it, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, Mitchell suffered from drug addiction and mental health woes, his family said. You know, uh, now looking at the guy, you wouldn't think he's he's into that kind of stuff. Seems pretty much clean cut, you know, but you can never tell. Okay. But to continue here, it says here, deputies recovered meth, heroin, and a handgun from the location. Authorities said when Mitchell was taken to a local hospital, his internal body temperature was only 72 degrees. While an autopsy has not been released. It is clear that Tony's death was wrongful, the result of horrific, malicious abuse and maintains um, of deliberate interference, the lawsuit states. An emergency room doctor noted in Mitchell's medical records that it was hard to understand why his body was so cold. That's because he was locked in the damn freezer, but to continue, <laughs> it had to be. God, at least 72 degrees. Come on, let's go. Uh, he could have had a medical condition that led to hypothermia. And it wasn't known if he was exposed to a cold environment, the doctor wrote. When Mitchell was found inside the cold area, medical treatment was delayed for five hours before he finally received help. When he arrived at the hospital, he had no pulse and only agonal respiration no excuse me yeah respir respiration yeah of two to four breaths per minute the lawsuit states hmm wow you know look let me tell you something there's no condition that i know of that you can just be sitting and you just get so cold that you suffer hyperthermia okay they put this dude in the cooler for real man and they left him there just like the lawsuit states. That's just what it is, you know. Look at this right here. And then on top of that, you know, it looked like to me from these pictures, I just kind of get the feeling that from the alleged drug abuse or, or, or even maybe before that, dude might have been like kind of mentally ill. You understand what I mean? And do they even have mentally ill, you know, uh, facilities anymore? You know, as I know, a couple of them closed down where I live, you know, it was open for years. You know, it's called this place called State School out here. And then you have another one. I can't remember where exactly where it was, but it was in Indiana called Irene Barn. You know what I understand? A lot of people back in the day used to talk about such and such had a nervous breakdown and had to go out to Irene Barn. But that's when I was a kid. I used to hear the grown-ups talk that. <laughs> like, what kind of place is that? What the hell is a nervous breakdown? You don't hear about them kind of terms no more. You understand? But yeah, I don't I don't even think they have places, facilities for people to have like mental issues now. I think when they, you know, do some criminal act, they put them in prison. And that's not where they need to be. Okay? But that's my personal opinion. Okay. To continue here, uh, court documents show surveillance images of Anthony Mitchell's experience inside the jail. And as you can see right here, this is Anthony Mitchell. He's a far outcry look from where he looks like right here. You know, what happened to the guy? You know, he got a little watch on, you know what I mean? Uh, looks clean, you know what I mean? But then to wind up looking like this. A swamp rat or something. You know, he just looked bad. You know what I'm saying? This guy, some some 
took a drastic change with this guy, you know. It says down here, Mitchell was initially arrested on January 13th after his family called police over his erratic behavior. Huh, erratic behavior. Again, you guys that's been riding with me for the longest already know. When I tell you people start acting strange, erratic behavior, you know, doing things out of the norm, you know, you better call an exorcist because I'm telling you, demons are jumping to and fro in the people. You understand what I'm saying? And a real good way for a person to get possessed is to use drugs. You see, you open up the threshold of your soul. You understand? And you allow these entities in. And they'll have you out here. They'll have you doing all kinds of crazy stuff using you as a host. You know what I mean? Using you as a host. And then you'll wind up just like this guy did, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And matter of fact, if you look close right here, I can actually see this face right here on his shirt. You know, you can see that face. All you got to do is just, if you got a zoom or something like that, just check that out. You'll see the face right there, you know. Now, in conclusion here, it says, though, uh, the Mitchell family credits one corrections department official for preserving footage of Mitchell's experience in the jail. Guard Karen Kelly has also sued the Walker County Sheriff's Office over her termination after she was after she shared videos with Mitchell, uh, Mitchell's relatives of his facing abuse in the jail. AL.com reported. Um, the Mitchell family lawyer slammed the jail in a statement to the post this is the worst case of inmate abuse I have ever seen attorney John Goldfarb said guess what John Goldfarb no you can google even more you'll see even worse than this okay so just check it out but to continue the evidence of abuse would have been buried with Tony Mitchell but for the bravery of a lone corrections officer who made videos of what really happened to Tony and shared one of them. And they fired her for exposing the truth of this abuse. The Sheriff's Department and County Jail did not respond to a request for comment sought by AOL.com Monday. Okay. Hey, that's the tale of the tape. You know, uh, Karen, uh, Miss Karen Kelly, that's the tale of the tape. Anytime you try to do some righteous, you know, you got these wicked ass low lives well they don't want you doing that you understand what i'm saying so yeah they're gonna that you know yeah they're gonna you know fire you that's basically what it is but you'll get good conversation because look like to me the family finna get paid you understand to me but you guys tell me what you think about this particular situation right here i'm interested in hearing your thoughts views and opinions on it like comment share and subscribe and people please remember to live your life as though we are being watched simply because we are. This is James and I'm out. Peace.